What's up guys, the May Patreon rewards are now available. Cyclonic Rift, Jace the Mind Sculptor, and Avison Angel of Hope are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves or by clicking the link in the description below. What's going on guys? Welcome to another gameplay video and today we are jumping back in with Luris of the Dream Den. Whoops, <laughs> did not mean to do that. Uh, Luris is a really, really awesome card. We've tested a few decks with it already. Uh, this one is an Orizov kind of aggro enchantments list, uh, which I'm actually really excited about. This is very reminiscent. Uh, pre Akoria, we played a Abzan enchantments list as well. Uh, and it, it was kind of a similar theme where uh, the idea is, you know, you get a Hateful Eidolon out, uh, you Myers Grasp and Deadweight the opponent's stuff, and then ideally you're able to get a little bit of card draw, a little bit of value off of that. This one's much more aggro focused, not quite so mid rangey, um, but, you know, still a very, very solid deck, and I'm interested in trying it out in best of one here. So uh, to kind of go through, obviously Luris is our companion, uh, so this does give us kind of some built-in recursion whenever we need it. Uh, my assumption is we're going to try and hold off on playing Luris until, uh, depending on the, the matchup, until the opponent maybe sweeps the board the first time or does something like that, then we can play Luris out, hopefully play some stuff back. Uh, so that's kind of the idea there, at least. Um, and the one-drop slot, though, uh, as, far, as far as, like, early aggressive creatures, uh, we have the Life's Bounty, Alcide, something like that, of Life's Bounty. Uh, this is a really, really good card. It's an enchantment, so not only does it give us a little bit of value there, but uh, it does have lifelink, and we can sacrifice it uh, by paying one and protect, you know, something else on our field, which we've got a few things that we'll want to protect. So quite good. Uh, Hateful Eidolon, like I said, a, a decent card draw engine for this list. Against other aggro decks, we do have quite a lot of, you know, Myers Grasp, Deadweight, things like that to kind of hate on what they're doing. Uh, and so this does give us an option for some card draw opportunity, which is really, really good. Uh, Knight of the Evan Legion, obviously just a really solid one drop. Uh, regardless. Um, we also, in this one drop slot, have things like Sentinel's Eyes, which is a recursive uh, enchantment uh, that allows us to, to kind of boost up our own guys. And again, if they die, ideally we'll have a hate, hateful Eidolon out so we can draw a card off of that. Uh, so very, very good. Uh, Karametra's Blessing, a great way to protect. Uh, it's, it's kind of a combat tricky card, but uh, it is a good way to protect any of our uh, enchanted creatures, which is really, really good, as well as just give them a, a, a power stats boost. So I'm, I'm pretty happy to see that in there. Granted, it's only as a two of, uh, which I think is correct. Uh, for Deadweight to make sure that we can kind of punch through damage, especially against like Mono Red or opposing Luris decks, is a really, really optimal card to have. Uh, Omen of the Dead here, just a really easy way to kind of pull something back, even if it is a Lurus. Uh, and so this just gives us the option of pulling a creature back out of our graveyard if we need to. Uh, Stone Coil Serpent, obviously a scalable threat uh, and protection from multicolored. Also has Reach and Trample, uh, so very, very good target for quite a lot of the enchantments that we've got. Sentinel's Eyes, uh, all that glitters in particular is a really good option to, to stick on a Stone Coil Serpent just so you can get as much damage as possible through. Uh, so very, very strong card in my opinion. Uh, as far as the two drop slot goes, we have a one of Starfield Mystic. Uh, it cheapens all of our enchantments, which is great. Uh, but whenever an enchantment uh, we control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, it also gets a plus one, plus one counter. So this gives us an option for kind of another really, really strong uh, win condition, especially in tandem with these dead weights and Myers graphs. It's just a great way to, uh, you know, kill a creature. The enchantment's going to go to the, the graveyard, obviously, and so there's going to get a counter on it. Uh, Ephemia here, fantastic in my opinion. So this is just a really, really good way to keep the creature damage going. Uh, it just, you, you exile enchantments from your graveyard at the end of the turn, you get a 2-2 for it. Uh, very, very good effect in this deck. Uh, obviously we've got, you know, these dead weights, these Myers graphs in particular, they're going to hit the graveyard and then not really do much, uh, after that. This just gives added value to that. Granted, it is a 2 of, it is a legendary creature, so we do have to be careful there. Uh, all that glitters, absolute all-star in this list. Uh, a 4 of, easy. Uh, this is just such a powerful enchantment. We've seen this in a lot of different decks. This is just a really, really prime place for it. Two Myers Grasps again here to uh, destroy some of the opponent's creatures. And then three Call of the Death Dweller. Uh, this just gives us a way to bring back a lot of the creatures that we have uh, in the graveyard. So again, if they do sweep or if we need a little bit more power on the field, 
uh, and they've removed some things. This just gives us an option there. Uh, I believe we're pretty low on the land count. Let's make sure 21 here. So seven uh, plains and six swamps. Uh, a little bit higher on the plains than the swamps, but we do have two castle lock flames, so really that kind of evens out pretty closely. Uh, four godless shrine, and then only two temple of silence. We don't want too many tapped lands in this list. We are an aggro list. We're looking to win very, very quickly, so 21 lands is a little low, but I think it's a good starting point, so that's pretty much it. Let's see how it does. I'm excited. Uh, I love these enchantment lists. I was kind of looking for a... I didn't want to repeat Abzan because we just did Abzan like yesterday. Uh, but before, like I said, pre Akoria, we did play a Abzan enchantments list that felt really, really good. Um, didn't win all the time and certainly had its faults, but it was it was a solid deck. So I was kind of hoping to get something like that again, and we got close. Uh, sorry for frame rates here, guys. Um, again, I know it's a bit annoying. Let me uh, just check. Okay, all right. Uh. Not an amazing hand, but I do think we keep this. Uh, our dead weights are going to be a little unexciting versus what the opponent has going on here, uh, is my guess, but we'll see. Um, hopefully these frame rates pick up as well. Again, guys, I do apologize. This is uh, our network is absolutely terrible at the moment, uh, so we'll just pass here. Um, some exciting things to talk about while you're watching this glitchy game. Um, so first and foremost, I do want to mention we have our... Uh, man, this is so bad, these frame rates. I hate this. Uh, so we do have our... I think we play this here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to play this uh, for one. Kind of just spreading things out here. Um, next turn, the plan is to all the glitters, so that's kind of why I'm spreading things out. Um, so, we do have our basic land cycle, uh, that we, uh, play, or that we kind of spoiled on Instagram and social media stuff very recently. And we're excited about that. Um, that's a pretty big step for us, because, uh, that's, I mean, that's, that's a really cool thing. We actually made all those. They were really, really exciting to make, in my opinion. And so... I'm hoping, um, I'm just going to attack them here. Teferi is nice, but it's not amazing. Uh, it doesn't touch this, which is good. Um, those will be for sale. Uh, so if you're interested in picking those up, you can. Uh, but we will we'll get those out for you guys as soon as we can. Proofs are on the way. So very excited to see what they end up looking like. Really excited. All right, land is good for us. Let's get uh, you out. Pump that up a little bit. Um, let's get you out. Um, yeah, and we will protect this. Again, not going to worry about Teferi quite yet. Um, potentially next turn we'll do something about it, but I'm not too stressed about it at this point. Um, hopefully guys in the next game, the frame rate thing will be better. I do apologize. If you are willing to stick it out, I certainly would appreciate it. Um, here we're worried about a sweeper. Um, Yorian. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ah, excuse me. Uh, so here we can kind of double up and kill this if we'd like. Yeah. Uh, let's play the temple out. Actually don't think we need that now. Um, let's do this. Uh, and let's do this. All right, um, I'm gonna all attack them. Uh, again, Teferi is fine, but not amazing. Um, and we're just trying to get them down to a manageable life total here. Uh, 
We just kind of have to hope they don't have a sweeper, I suppose. That's kind of fine. As long as they don't find a sweeper, which they might. But we do have Luris' backup, which is nice. Oh, Mythos of Aluna. That's very cool. Very, very cool. Do they really have a good option, though? So, I guess they can copy that, but it doesn't work, right? I was going to say, I don't think that works. Hmm. All right. Are they going to bounce something? See, and that's why that doesn't really matter is because this just comes back. <laughs> Throw that out there. We're going to deadweight this. And we just all attack. I mean, yeah, there we go. All right. Tried to finish that game very quickly as we are really, really having issues with the frame rates here. Um, all right. Let's see what we're doing. Let's see what happens if we uh, get out of that game. See, we jump back up there. I hate that. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and jump into game two. We'll see how the frame rates do in this one. Um, hopefully they will be better. I may have to restart and just kind of do a quick refresh on the network, but uh regardless i'm liking this deck that felt pretty good um it was very very aggressive which was perfect 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 we will see what we are up against this one they do not have a companion um yeah i think we can keep this we don't have any removal which is like not great for us but uh we do have quite a bit of early game stuff which is great um, chances are we're going to hold on to this as long as possible. Just on the, it depends what we're up against, but just to give us the opportunity, yeah, to block stuff. It's mono red. That's cool. Um, if we can get some removal, we're going to be in great shape. Uh, let's get Knight out here. And we'll pass. Uh, against Fervent Champion, if they've got another Fervent Champion, we're in trouble, but they do kind of have to deal with this to get through some damage if they're, if they don't have that second champion. Um, and given that they mulligans, you know, there's a decent chance. They could just have a Rimrock Knight here. Um, I'm going to pass. I don't think there's a reason they'd attack in unless they knew they could get through, so. We could trade off the Knight. I don't feel good about doing that quite yet. Um, yeah, I think that's correct. Yep, and they did have the knight. Okay. Oh, well, that kind of makes things easier. Um, let's do this. And let's just do this. My assumption is if they had a second champion, they would have played it. So that's why I'm not going after that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm not going to attack here. They're on a mulligan. Uh, they've got less cards than we do, and we have a lot more stuff than they do just in terms of resources and recursion. Uh, so I'm going to make them remove stuff if they want to attack in. Like, th if they... Hmm. Interesting, interesting. You know what? No, I'm going to take the one. They've got another knight. I'm not willing to risk that. Um, trying to play very, very carefully against mono red. You gotta be careful against these kinds of decks. Um, okay, that's fine. We do have a little bit of life link here, so taking some damage is not the worst. And there we go. That's what we were playing around. Um, let's go ahead and get this land out. That is a good card for us, actually. Um, Let's first, hmm, I think I'm just going to play stuff out and pass. Um, do I have to be careful of an Ember Cleave? That's kind of my one big thing that I'm worried about. 
Let's attack with both. I'm not going to pass. I'm going to make him. There we go. Uh, okay. Sorry, guys. Frame rate issue, I know. Ugh, this is terrible. Our network lately... I, I know this is happening elsewhere, too. Um, in our ISP in this area, we're, we're locked in uh, to a dedicated ISP, so we can't... We don't really have options for other ways to go, uh, which makes it very difficult. Um, and they're not very good. So that kind of sucks for us. But okay, uh, here, what's the best route? It's in our graveyard, just that. We can play this out on three, but that doesn't seem great. We are at a bit of a stalemate here. Um, Hmm. <laughs> Is that really the best thing, though? Can we just play this out at three? Yeah, let's do that. I don't know if that's correct, to be honest. It will not attack. I mean, if they've got, like, an Ember Cleave, they're going to start poking through some damage here. So that's where we got to be pretty careful. I could see them just, yep, attacking all. Makes sense, makes sense. Uh, <clears throat> Alright, so. I'm going to do this. We're going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm okay to block pretty much everything here. Um, this most likely is going to die. If they've got the Ember Cleave, then something is going down here. Um, but... We do have the Call of the Death Dweller. Um, so they're going to have to kind of choose here. And we get to... Yep. I assume they hit Annex with it. I mean, that just kind of makes the most sense. That's a lot of damage. Yep. Okay. So... What can we do? Hmm. So we can bring back two things. That doesn't do it though, right? So do we just lose? I think we do. I wish we had like something to remove this. If this had been a much more removal heavy hand, I think we would have been okay. As it stands, we cannot beat an Ember Cleave. So I'm just gonna pass or uh, concede. And we'll move on to game three. Um, so far, one and one with this list. I do like it. I, I think it feels pretty good. It's a little hit or miss from just those two games, but that's a very small sample set, so we do have to be, you know, careful of that. Um, we'll go ahead and jump into game three and see how it goes. Hopefully, we'll have better frames. <laughs> um, also, uh, we have had a couple new people signing up on Patreon. I just want to give a shout out to you guys there. Uh, we really, really appreciate the support on Patreon. Um, for us kind of small time creators, that's pretty great uh, to have such a dedicated you know, group of people supporting what we do. Um, that's pretty awesome. I mean, genuinely. So thank you to all of you guys. Thank you for everybody supporting regardless of how you support. Um, but Patreon in particular, they're I mean, they're monetarily helping what we do, which is pretty key to keeping it going. Um, so seriously, thank you to you guys. Thank you to everybody watching as well, because we've had our view counts, guys, have like, I can't even tell you how much they have gone up in recent uh, recent weeks. It has been amazing. Um, so really, really appreciate it. Um, oops. Let's go ahead and attack in here first we'll play this out at two um given that we have this in hand i'm kind of happy to get this out as quickly as we can <clears throat> um okay perfect we have the card for that let's get rid of it and we'll all that glitters on stone coil all right let's do it and this is exactly what this deck would love to do. Like, remove threats, swing in for a bunch of damage. The one thing I will say, uh, it'd be great to have a Hateful Eidolon. That would really put us over the top. But 
we still get, you know, a lot of what we need to do. This is so interesting. If we had had another land, um, granted we do have a dead weight in hand, so that's fine. Do they have a protection? Ah, okay. That's fine. I mean, yeah, you got it. That's a very temporary thing. Um, <laughs> going for the trampler. They can block this. That's fine. Shouldn't have attacked in, but... All right. Um, my assumption is their removal is mostly burn. I would as I assume. Uh, and so I'm not super worried about my stone coil going down. They might have like a banishing light because it is white and that's kind of a problem. Oh, mean. But that kind of doesn't matter. Um, yeah, <laughs> that was the perfect draw actually. Okay, that was a pretty quick game. Okay, so takeaways so far. Um, one, frame rates suck. Very, 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 very sorry for the frame rate issue. Hopefully you guys can stick through it. Uh, really do appreciate it if you do. Second, on the deck, loving it so far. It is very aggressive. You are very, I mean, we saw in that second game, if you don't have the removal against something like a mono red deck, as always, you're going to have issues. Um, I think given like a Myers grasp to deal with that annex would have been probably okay. We wouldn't have been perfect, but we would have been in a much better position, obviously. Um, so that was luck of the draw. Um, I don't think we played incorrectly. I think, you know, that was just how the game kind of boiled down. Um, as far as the deck as a whole, I love this build. Uh, I love these enchantment focused decks. Uh, Luris is so, so good. And we didn't get to see it there uh, because we were lacking a land. But what we could have done if we had drawn a land, play Luris. The dead weight in our graveyard becomes now a playable card. So we don't have to use the one in our hand. And we get a second use out of the same dead weight to kill, you know, the opposing creature and then be able to swing in. So. There's a lot of like really cool kind of synergies that happen there. And then, of course, just the power of a card like All That Glitters. Uh, that card is amazing in this deck. Uh, it's amazing in most decks that it's played in, of course, but uh, very, very good here. I love it in tandem with the Stone Coil Serpent. You can play the Serpent out early and then just boost it up if you've got the All That Glitters and it has tramples, so it's going to deal some damage. So. I love this deck. Uh, we're going to give this a video too, of course, so we'll we'll see it again. Uh, please make sure you stay tuned and stick around for that video. Uh, but if you enjoyed this one, make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. As always, make sure to subscribe as well. We really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for the support recently. Really does just make my heart sore, guys. You're amazing. So thank you very much, guys. I will see you hopefully uh, very, very soon with part two of this Orzov Enchantments aggro deck. All right, guys. See you later.